In this video, I am going to show you how you can get 110 volt AC power from your 20 volt DC power tool batteries. So I'm sure you're wondering how on earth are you going to get 110 volts AC out of this 20 volt DC power tool battery? Well, we're going to need a little help and we are going to use one of these. And this is an inverter. What it does is it takes the 20 volts DC from the battery and it converts it to 110 volts AC. It just slides right on the battery, just like any power tool that you may use with this battery. And like I said, it has a 110 volt outlet on the front. And if you look here on the sides, it has two USB outlets. And right here on the front, it has a handy dandy flashlight. And I got this on Amazon. I think I paid right at $40 for it. I'll put a link to it down in the description of the video. And be sure and check that link out because they make these for other than just DeWalt. If you click that link, it'll take you straight to the page on Amazon and you can see what other brands they make this for. And I want to point out that this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this with my own money. I am sharing this with you guys because I think this is a pretty cool product. And yes, this will produce 110 volts AC. You can plug things in here and power them just like you had them powered in your house. But there is a caveat. And that caveat is this inverter is limited to 150 watts. There's just so many things you can power with such a small battery and inverter setup. So this will power things like cell phone chargers, camera chargers, uh, you can charge a tablet with it, it'll run LED lights, it'll run fans. I also use it for some accent lighting on my patio. It will power all those things with no problems. What you're not gonna be able to power with it are big items, like you're not gonna run a refrigerator or a microwave with this. Uh, you're not going to run an air conditioner. So there is a limit to what you can power with this setup. I've got some things set aside here. Let's try them out and see how well this thing will power them. It's really simple how it works. You just put the inverter on the battery and you hold this button down here on the top. And you can see the light turns to green. When it is green, that means that the outlet is producing 110 volts and the USB outlets are producing five volts. So first let's try out the USB. I've got my cell phone here and it's almost fully charged, but I think it will power up just enough so that you can see that it's actually doing something. I'm going to plug it in. And there you can see 98% charge, but it is now charging my phone with this little setup. Here is a, another USB device. This is one of the wireless mics that I use to make videos like this one. Let's plug it into the USB. There you go. You can see it is charging my wireless mic. All right, let's try out the 110 volt inverter. I've got the charger and one of the batteries for my camera. Let's see how well this works. And there you go. You can see right there the lights flashing. So now it is charging the battery for my camera using the 110 volts. So now I've got a small fan plugged into the inverter. Let's turn it on and see if it works. I do know it says on this fan that it is 60 watts. So that's about half of the capacity of this inverter. So it should power it up, no problem. And there we go. Powers up the fan, no problem. All right, next up is the very first video I ever did on making stuff. This is video number one. It is an old arrow sign that I made and I used incandescent Christmas tree lights. These are not LED lights. I looked on the tag for the lights. It says that they are 120 watts. That's getting up there close to the limit, but it's not the limit. So let's turn it on and see what it will do. And as you can see, it works just fine. So here's a closer look at some accent lighting that I'm using here on my back patio. These are LED bulbs and I got this from Harbor Freight. And if you look at the tag that is on this, it says that they are 12 watts. So theoretically, I should be able to put 12 strands of these on that inverter. 
but unfortunately I only have one. So let's wait for it to get a little bit darker and let's see how well this works. Okay, so the sun has set here and I have plugged the lights into the inverter and you can see it is powering them just fine. And this little setup works great for us because I can just leave the battery and the inverter right here and I no longer have to run an extension cord from inside the house and down the stairs and plug it in here because that extension cord, when it was run through the door, we couldn't close the door all the way. So this is a great little setup for when we're out here on the patio and we want to turn these lights on. So you may be wondering what kind of runtime should you expect to get from one of these inverters? Well, that's going to depend on a couple of things. The first one is the size of the load that you put on the inverter. And then second, the capacity of the battery that you use. Let me give you an example. I took the arrow sign that we tested out earlier because it's 120 watts and it's the closest thing that I could find to the maximum of the inverter, which is 150 watts. Then I hooked it up to this five amp hour battery and I just let it run and it ran for right at 40 minutes on this five amp hour battery. I also did an experiment on those LED lights that I've got on my back patio and for that test I used a three amp hour battery and those ran for over two and a half hours. Now that is a lot longer than the 40 minutes that that aero sign ran but you got to remember that aero sign is incandescent lamps and those lamps out on my patio are LED so they pull a lot less power. And one other thing I want to point out about the inverter like I said, it has a 150 watt limit on the output. You do not want to overload this thing because you can damage the inverter if you overload it. The inverter does have a built-in fuse, but it is soldered to the circuit board inside of this inverter and it's not very easy to change. Don't ask me how I know this. So that should give you an idea of what this is capable of powering. Um, they do make these for different brands of batteries. It's not just the DeWalt thing. I've got a link down in the description. I bought this one on Amazon and I think it was around $40, but they do make these for Craftsman, Milwaukee, Makita, Ryobi, and they color match them. So, you know, the Milwaukee's are red, the DeWalt's are yellow. Uh, so click on that link and check it out. Um, I just wanted to make this quick little video and share this little tidbit of information with you guys because um, I get some use from this around the shop. Uh, it's also great if you go camping or even for emergencies, if you lose power. Uh, if there's uh, any type of tool out there that you guys have found on Amazon that you would like to share, let me know down in the comments. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.